next room, Danielle. Friday, September 24th, 9.05. They canceled the marathon. Oh no. What are we going to do? I can't believe it's canceled. I could not do a marathon now. We could just party that weekend in Halloween. Get 26 miles, 0.2 in here. What do you have any ideas? Around? Maybe I could connect all of the parks in the area. So Bear Creek, let's do that. Directions from home, go up to Red Rocks. Canyon open space and then Ute Valley. So now we're at 20.3 miles with 1,699 feet of elevation. And then maybe back home would only put us at 23.1. So I'd really You're only have. more in Garden of the Gods. Yeah, I could do a three mile loop in there. I think that's gonna have to be plan B. Do you want to join me for this one? Running it? Well, will you be? Will you help me carry water around? Sure. I don't know if I could do a whole marathon with water in my back. Yeah, I could be your aid station. Hmm. That's not a bad loop, though. Kind of connecting all the parks. Huh. Sounds like a plan, man. First self-made marathon, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully this isn't a bad idea. My sister and I went paddle boarding yesterday and we went to Rampart Reservoir and we're out on the water and I was looking up at the trail and I saw these bright green shorts run by and I asked Haley if she knew if there was a trail up there and she said oh yeah there's a trail around this entire reservoir she's like I think it's around 13 miles so we've made a decision we're changing up the course Andy and I Andy's gonna be on the mountain bike are going to run from Rainbow Gulch trailhead and run around Rampart Reservoir. So that's what we're gonna try now. Some undies, shorts, sockies, shirt, watch, and the van keys. Did you lock it? <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet, my little love, but I will. Oh, so cold. You're freezing? <laughs> really? All right, we made it for the night out in Pikes National Forest again. We are parked right across from the Rainbow Gulch Trailhead, and we are on the right side of the road, so we are not breaking any rules tonight. We are on the right side of the road for camping. We never break rules. We never break rules around here. I'm a changed woman. So this guy. Damn straight. Nighty night. <sighs> All right, seems like a great day to run a marathon. That was weird. <laughs> Take three. <laughs> Do you try? All right, time to go do a marathon. Add a little teepee. 
into a pocket. Yeah, you squeeze those abs. That's nothing. <laughs> I feel yours. No, I mean your boogies. <laughs> You know, you can't discriminate against me because my buddy is that big. Yeah, I can. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful day. Um, I don't have the same excitement that I normally do before running a marathon or any race. I'm scared a little bit, which I think is a good thing. Well, I'm sure part of the excitement comes from, you know, there being a big event right. and a lot of people doing the same thing that you're doing. Right. And now there's not. It's always nice to have a bunch of runners going through the same cold morning, you know, all the pre-race things. So. Yeah, but now you have a rolling aid station. I do. And I'm really excited to see this trail twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Get that watch started. Oh no. Back, back. <laughs> so, that says run, right? Yep. Okay, so I just click start. Yep, and then start again. Alright, here I go! It's flat. There's no potholes. And it's downhill, baby. Rolling aid station. First mile. <laughs> In um, 2012, I think, there was a pretty large forest fire in the area. It went almost all the way to Colorado Springs. Like, uh, people were getting evacuated and such. And I just think it's pretty crazy. You can see right where the forest fire came through and the regrowth starting and all the aspens. favorite kind of weather to run in. <laughs> <laughs> Talking is hard though. Nicely said. Well, I've been carrying all this stuff and haven't been needed yet. <sighs> but I'm playing the long game.
you just kind of accept it. And then for me, after acceptance, then the bear usually climbs on. Well, here we are, halfway. Do you have anything to say? <laughs> Thank God I don't have to carry my own water. <laughs> we um, are pretty much right back where we started, so we're gonna run the opposite direction, see a, the trail from a different perspective. to jump on. The bear means the real pain, the wall, some people call it. But right now, music is a good sedative. So I'm sedating myself up. <laughs> Just made it to 18 miles. I think she's doing all right. I'm glad I get to do this with her. Here she comes. I'm so happy to see you. She always has a smile on her face. Oh. Oh. It hurts. Oh. You're doing great. Mile 24 looks like. <laughs> we had a little wipeout. Because <laughs> my legs got too tired of picking themselves up. But we got 2.2 miles left. Here we go. Home stretch. <sighs> About a half mile left. She's rocking out to her headphones. I hope she doesn't realize this is mostly uphill. First self-made marathon, second marathon, first rolling, um, what's your title? 
Oh. <laughs> rolling aid station. First rolling aid station. <laughs> Any thoughts you had? Did anything surprise you? My butt's really sore. I think you did really well. You always looked good running. And I wish you drank a little bit more water. Andy? Okay, good. I think I'm good to talk to myself now into this little camera here. I think for me, running this marathon was something that I wanted to prove to myself that I could push through the time. If you're going to spend time doing anything, how much of our time is actually meaningful. Not to say that going outside and running around all these aspen trees is a good or bad way to spend time, but it was meaningful in the sense that it broke me down um, at mile 24 and really starting at mile 18. It was tackling my mind, meaning that I was tackling my thoughts and the things that they were telling me that I couldn't do or could do. I couldn't finish this race. I could stop and walk. I could just sit on the trail for a long time. I could walk back to the van. Um, and just those funny conversations that you have with yourself. And when you've been exercising for so long, I think there's this weird breakdown where you become very narrowed in on your thoughts and it becomes very difficult to see the larger perspective of what's going on around you. I just kind of think it's fun to try to do those things to make the essence of time questioned because it either seems like it goes so fast or slow. And when it seems like it goes so fast, it's often because we're able to just go into autopilot and do certain things in order to pass the time, check the boxes, go through another day. So this was really an experiment of a random Saturday morning, getting up out of the van and just putting on the laces, tying them up and pushing through that, those thoughts and experimenting with six hours of time to see what happened to me physically, emotionally, and mentally. The thing for me about running is that it's this free thing of exploring and pushing yourself. You know, in this first scene where I'm running down the first trail, it's just a beautiful way to see a fall day. It's flat! It's so hot! And it's downhill, baby! And then you can see very quickly how by the end of the race, my sense of adventure and time very quickly changes. <laughs> this is what mile 24 looks like. <laughs> but we got 2.2 miles left. Here we go. Um, after six hours of being out in it, you can see how much I've forgotten, you know, about the aspens and the water. And it becomes much more about the distance and the amount of time that I have left. Things that are in my control and aren't very variable. There's also this very sweet opportunity in this run for me and my boyfriend Andy to experience something that was very stripping of me emotionally, physically, and mentally. And you know, once you get there and you're your person at your core, everything's visible. You don't have the energy to hide vulnerabilities or hide strong emotions. You only have the energy for what is real and to continue to be accepted and supported and loved by somebody in that state is maybe one of the reasons that we do this game of life. But I love that shot of him recording my last half mile and hoping that I don't realize that I'm running uphill. About a half mile left. 
she's rocking out to her headphones. I hope she doesn't realize this is mostly uphill. So yeah, this is basically my story of creating a route to run 26.2 miles, stripping away all of the, the medals and the timing and the spectators and the announcers, the excitement that lives on the surface of what you're really doing, which is just out there exploring some trails. Um, this was my challenge to try to strip all that back and see what fears came up and if I could overcome them and accept them in the arena of running.